rupiyam uh, no ravi i did not get a chance uh, i will do it uh, in the, uh, like tomorrow maybe yeah sure sure no problem and uh, please provide your uh, uh, phone number so that uh, i'll start adding you to the hadoop group okay i will i will i'll ping you yeah this is mine one right yeah uh, sure 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 come down i'll take that one and i'll also forward you those things and instruction you going to be our forwarder yeah sure yep it yesterday what you covered it mostly part yesterday what we covered mostly we covered map reduce uh, process the map reduce architecture we have covered okay oh. is there a way i can repeat it here yes, somewhere as i'm going if to any repeat, other i'm going to repeat the part and then uh, i'll take it from there okay today we are going to see this particular thing as map reduce flow chart okay so let us give a, a couple of minutes time so that uh, uh, shashank also would uh, shashank has joined and who is expected to join uh, who is expected to join i think uh, uh, sarunan is expected to join uh, let him join right? because uh, today's class is going to be very important and we need to take it from this Okay. So today, today we are going to discuss this um, map reduce flow chart. So in this uh, session, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to discuss the entire end-to-end -end process that is going to happen when the client is uh, expected to submit a job and the client is expected to submit a job. for uh, processing a file for processing a file which is existing in uh, uh, hdfs which is existing in hdfs okay so we have talked about uh, name node we have talked about uh, data node we have talked about uh, job tracker we have talked about task trackers and we have talked about mappers and then we have talked about uh, reducers also as well right shashank Shashank, I hope you are clear, right? What we are doing here? Yes, Ravi. Yep. So see here. Ah, uh, this. We have talked about name node. We have talked about uh, we have talked about data node, as well as uh, we talk about job tracker. Tracker. We talked about uh, task tracker. task tracker we talk about map rendering users okay a couple of questions from my side we have talked about the map and then we have talked about this reducer first thing is first thing is the number of mappers is going to be decided by the number of input splits okay who is going to decide the number of uh, mappers that are required task tracker is going to decide the number of mappers and uh, see let me tell you the couple of steps here so the client is there 
uh, a client would like to process a file which is of uh, file.txt which is a file.txt and then uh, assuming that this is of uh, 200 MB which is of 200 MB in size okay now this 200 MB of size is being split into four, four partitions here that is F1 this is F2 as well as F3 along with uh, F4 it is split into four partitions here. okay now uh, among them what you are having here is uh, you have this cherry can you really one minute please. Hello, Ravi. Hi. Okay. Uh, the file is split into four partitions, which is uh, F1, F2, F3, and uh, F4. Right. Uh, F4 partitions here, and then uh, you have this name node that exists. Okay. Uh, assuming that this is the name node that you are having here. Okay. name node and based on this particular name node uh, you have this uh, metadata that exists we have this metadata that exists and then we are calling this one as a uh, uh, fs image fms image is fs image is existing like this and based on this one you have a couple of data nodes that exist this is uh, data node one this is data node two okay this is data node three and along with uh, you have different data nodes that exist like this this is data node 4. So this one, this one, this one, and this one are uh, expected to be these data nodes. Okay, this one as well as this one is going to be our, uh, what we can say, is going to be our uh, uh, master data node, which is of this particular type here. This is going to be of this one. And here, you are expected to have one more thing. And what we are doing is that we are calling this one as a uh, job tracker, right? We are calling this one as a job tracker. This is what is your job tracker. Okay. So, uh, how is the links that are establishing here? Please see here. Very, very important here. See, job tracker contacting the name node for the purpose of uh, getting the location of this particular files so when you have this particular file of uh, 200 mb automatically what happens is that uh, you need to allocate uh, 600 mb in size here 600 mb in size okay so you have four nodes what i'm having is that uh, i have f1 as well as i have f2 f2 as well as f3 and f4 f3 as well as f4 that are existing here and uh, uh, assuming that we need to specify here this is one this is three and this is seven like that we need to specify as well as this is two this is four as well as this is uh this is not seven this is four one three and uh, four uh this is two this is four and this is one that i can specify here whereas uh f3 what you're hanging here this is four uh this is one along with this is uh, two i can specify and uh if you have f4 f4 is something like uh two this is four and this is one like that we need to specify so now the name node what it will do is that uh, it will not give you all the entire replication block nodes data nodes but it will tell you based on its uh, internal statistics it will tell you a specific block it will tell you a specific block that is a uh, f1 is present in uh, block one f1 what you're hanging here is present in block one as well as f2 what you're hanging here is present in block four as well as uh, F3 is present in again block 4. F3 is present in block 4 as well as uh, uh, F4 what you're hanging here. Uh, I can uh, specify this one as 3 and this is the place where your uh, information is present. So assuming that it is giving this information here. Okay, so here you're hanging this uh, F1 that is existing. F1 as well as uh, F2 is existing in, in, in 4. Uh, this is uh, F2 that is existing here, as well as uh, F3 is existing in 4. F3 is also existing in 4, right? So here, 
I can also show you something called as F3 as well as uh, you have one more thing. What is that one here? You have F4 which is existing in 3. This is uh, F4. Okay. So assume that it has given these particular blocks here. Okay. Now, the, so for each and every data node, what you're having here, you're going to have an associated uh, task tracker that exists. This is what is your task tracker. This is what is your associated task tracker. So what is the purpose of this task tracker? The purpose of this task tracker is uh, to, uh, it is going to, it is going to initiate a script. Uh, it is going to initiate a script uh, and what we do, what we call about that script, the, that particular script is called as a uh, uh, mapper. We call that particular script as mapper here. Okay, so this mapper, this mapper, what you're having here is, uh, is responsible for the purpose of uh, processing the data that is existing in this file split. Okay, similarly, you have one more mapper that is uh, uh, created here. You have one more mapper that is created as well as here, you, this is a trivial case that I'm talking about here. You have one more mapper that exists in this data node, as well as you have one more mapper that exists in this data node that specifies. So this mapper, as well as uh, these two mappers, what you're having here, are responsible for the purpose of uh, executing the local data sets that are existing here. So what is this mapper here, Shashank or uh, Divya? What is this mapper that we are talking about? Any idea? What is this mapper Process that we are talking about? by task tracker to work on the file. See here, this is the job tracker that is going to copy those uh, jobs. Copy those jobs. What is that job here? The job what you are talking about is nothing but a Java program. Okay. But in in other terms, what we do is that we call this one as a map reduce program also as well. We call this one as a map reduce program. Okay. So what it is going to do is that the job tracker is going to transmit this uh, Java code. Is going to transmit this Java code to the to the place where this data node is present. Okay. It is also uh, it is also passing that uh, information to this. Uh, uh, name node also as well. It is also passing to this name node also as well. So here, sorry, data node here also as well. So here you have this task tracker that exists. So uh, can anybody tell me the relationship between the job tracker and the task tracker? Every three seconds, uh, the task tracker is supposed to produce the heartbeat. Okay. When it is producing the heartbeat, uh, what does it mean? It says that uh, the task tracker is alive and it specifies that what are all the mappers that are associated in that particular data node and uh, what are getting executed and what is the status of each and every mapper that information is going to be specified by this uh, task tracker here okay so whenever the job tracker doesn't receive any heartbeat from the uh, task tracker for a certain number of times for a certain number of times okay it assumes that the task tracker is dead and the task tracker is dead so whatever all the data that needs to be processed in that particular local data node, it, it is not only one data node that exists, right? Sir, it is not only one block, right? There will be multiple blocks that exist of different files, okay? Where each and every process, where each and every mapper is processing the data of different programs. So, uh, in such a case, if the job tracker feels that the task tracker is dead, what automatically what it does is that uh, it will automatically transfer the process it will automatically transfer the process okay from this uh, data node one to some other place where those particular files are existing where uh, some of those files are existing so for example in this case uh, uh, if def1 on this node one is dead what it will do is that uh, it will automatically transfer the entire execution from this place to this particular uh, name node three so this is the place uh, where uh, it will identify the same block that is existing. It will identify the same block that is existing and uh, it will initiate another mapper for the purpose of executing this F1. Okay, now the question is uh, when it starts, uh, when it starts executing this uh, F1, okay, will it start from scratch or else uh, it will start from the place where it has failed earlier, Sarvanan? 
will it start from scratch or uh, uh, it will start from the place where it has failed earlier? Any idea? Start I think it will start from scratch. It will start from scratch only. It will start from scratch. Okay. So this is uh, what is the architecture of your uh, job tracker along with your MapReduce program. Uh, Ravi, when uh, uh, job tracker doesn't know about this uh, other node, right? When it like when uh, name node gives uh, information of this file splits, like it gives one, four, three. So if if a task tracker is uh, like gone down in uh, one, in one, how does it know about the that it has hey, to brought one, up? One thing, I didn't tell you that uh, name node is going to pass only that information, right? Name node is going to pass the entire metadata information of that. In, the name node is going to pass the entire metadata of those particular file splits. Okay, where they are present. Okay, now the job tracker is going to uh, select the suitable uh, file splits for the purpose of uh, accessing those blocks. Is it clear? Oh, okay, it will send the entire thing. Okay. Mm. Yeah, got it. It will send the entire thing. Now, this is what is your uh, uh, clear cut architecture of your uh, job tracker, mapper. Uh, only we have seen. Okay, now let us come to the specific application. Okay, yesterday I have told you a specific application that is uh, I have a file, a very simple file I'll take. Hi, how are you? with your family how is your new business going all the best for your new venture new venture okay so this is the file that you are having here this is the file that you are having here and uh, what I'm expected to do, I'm expected to split this file. I'm expected to split this file into multiple chunks. So you have the first chunk. Okay, assume that you have this uh, second chunk that is there. Assume that this file has been split into two file splits, right? So in such a case, what you are hang here, hi, how are you? What you are hang here uh, uh, will be um, presented here. Ravi, uh, uh, sorry, actually I, I had noted something like this. It returns the location of each split. Uh, one location per split is returned based on the local proximity that is closest to the client, right? That's what uh, I think. Uh, no, no, no. Yesterday what I have told you is, uh, I have told you the job tracker, the job tracker, okay, is responsible for the purpose of taking only one split is uh, responsible for the purpose of taking only one split uh, in uh, the local proximity of the client. That's what I have told you, right, yesterday? Oh, okay. But name node returns everything. It's up to the job name tracker. Name node is expected to return everything. Name node is expected to return everything. But anyway, I'll check though and then I'll confirm with you. Okay. 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 And one more thing, Marley. Uh, let me tell you. Now only we are doing a, a bit of deep dive into this uh, HDFS architecture, right? HDFS architecture. Okay. At this point of time, I want you to understand, okay, what is the high level process that it is going to do? What is the high level process that each and every component of this HDFS architecture is going to do? Okay. And uh, what is the objective of each and every accomplishment? If this is something that you are able to understand, and if you are able to uh, understand these check pieces, okay, the moment once your entire MapReduce application is completed, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to integrate all your check pieces. Check pieces I'm going to integrate, and then I'm going to give you the full blown entire uh, uh, HDFS architecture in terms of storage along with the processing. Okay, 
till that point of time kindly bear with me for another uh, uh, three or four classes uh, by the time i complete this map reduce okay okay yeah so this is what is your uh, data here hi how are you and then how is your family now uh, i'll take this one as well as uh, i'll take this one also as well copy and then go ahead and then mm, go to this new slide and then paste it so these are your uh, uh, file scripts okay so how many mappers are required how many mappers here are required there is one mapper that is required here and here you have this uh, one mapper that is required here okay two mappers are required okay now two mappers are required and i need to pass this uh, uh, file split data as input to this uh, mapper here i need to pass this file split as a uh, input to this mapper here okay so whenever i am trying to pass this input as a file split to this mapper what what need to happen is a mapper or reducer are expected to understand only mapper or reducer what you are having here are uh, expected to understand only one type of input the type of input is what is called as uh, i have told you yesterday what is the type of input here i am not expected to pass this data like this i am not expected to pass this data like this but i am expected to split this one i am expect i am expect i am expected to split this one in the form of uh, one thing Even what is the thing called that is what uh, that is what is key value pairs yeah that is what is called as the key value pairs please understand one thing i see whatever the data that you are giving may why because uh, hadoop is not only expected to process the structured data right hadoop can process the structured semi structured and uh, unstructured data also as well okay so even if you give an image also it should process even though if you are going to give an image which is of uh, 200 mb in size while you are trying to store the data in uh, while you are trying to store the data in uh, uh, hdfs that image is going to be split into two splits and then it is going to be stored it is going to be stored so maybe it is going to be the log information log information or else it is going to be your uh, text based data the character based data or any junk data also as well that is how this uh, data is expected to be stored in the uh, if data is expected to be stored in this uh, uh, is expected to be stored in the uh, hadoop distributed file system okay now in such a case uh, your data might come in any format right when your data is expected to come in any format what happens is uh, hadoop or your mapper or your reducer what you are having here uh, is expected to is expected to identify only one type of input and the type of input is called as the key value pairs the type of input is expected as the key value pairs you got it sarvanan what i am talking here sarvanan murli kamran divijaya and uh, shashank is it clear what i am talking here i am talking about the key value pairs here so i tell you what is the key and what is the value here also as well okay sure yeah ravi so let me take this block here uh, i'll take this block i'll take this block here okay so generally Ravi, what it is uh, program only the key value pair is the input or for any mapper is the key value pair is always the input for any mapper or for any reducer what has to happen is uh, you need to you need to give your data in the form of the key value pairs only that is a mandate okay okay that is a okay. mandate so this is your mapper here so what is this mapper here anybody who knows java uh, um, i just thought of asking you sarvaran or murli or kamran divijaya 
I know Shashank is working on C sharp. Any four of you know Java earlier, or this is the first time you are coming to this Java here? Uh, first time for me. Murli, right? Yeah. Kamran? Okay, it's okay. I didn't hear anything. So this is the mapper here. So one thing what we need to understand is uh, uh, outside the outside any local file system or outside any uh, Hadoop uh, distributed file system, uh, what we see is uh, we see each and everything as a row, right? We see each and everything as a row. Okay, but in the case of HDFS, what happens is that uh, HDFS is expected to identify every line of this particular file as a record. Every line of this particular file as a record here. Okay. So obviously, what what is supposed to happen is uh, the moment uh, once you are expected to get such type of uh, input file, once you are expected to get such type of input file, uh, you are going to use one type of uh, predefined class or predefined constructor. Uh, that is called as a uh, record reader. Record reader. Okay. What is the purpose of this record reader? Uh, th this is nothing but a predefined uh, class or a constructor. Predefined class or a constructor. Okay. That will be executed. That will be executed before your map is expected to kick off. Before your map is expected to kick off. Okay. So. In this case, what is going to happen is uh, this record reader, this record reader is going to, this record reader is going to uh, read each and every line. This record reader is going to read each and every line of uh, input, and then it is going to produce uh, key value pairs. It is going to produce this key value pairs. Okay, so. If we want to understand what is this key, and then if, if we want to understand what is this value pair, see here. It is going to produce a, a type of key value pair here, key value, and then it is going to produce this value pair. Okay, so this key, what you are having here, is nothing but the byte offset. Anybody knows what is this byte offset? And the value is nothing but the entire line. And the value is nothing but the entire line. And the value what you are hanging here is nothing but the entire line here. What is this byte offset? Anybody I knows think what it's is a byte offset? Data type? No, no, no. Byte offset is nothing but uh, the number of characters that exist before the previous line. The number of characters that exist before the previous line. Okay. So, The number of characters that exist before the previous line. So, uh, see here. If you see this data, what happens is this is how your data exists, right? Hi, how are you? And how is your family? So, for the first line or for the first record, what is the offset? How many number of uh, previous characters that exist before you start this uh, first line? How many number of uh, previous characters that exist before you start reading this first line? Can anybody tell me? Zero. Zero, zero. right? This is zero, comma, hi, how are you? Zero, comma, hi, how are you? Okay, so how many characters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, Okay, so before you go ahead and then start reading the second line, the, the number of characters what you are having here is 15, right? The number of characters what you are having here is 15 here. So this is your 15, and what is the second one here? The second one is going to be your, hi, uh, how is your family? Hi, how is your family? So that is the uh, second key value that you are getting here.
this is the second uh, uh, key value pair you are having here. Okay, so the record reader, what you are having is uh, the record reader is going to produce this output. The record reader is going to produce this output. Okay, and this output, this output is going to be given as the input to this mapper here. Is going to be given as input to this mapper here. Okay, so one thing that you need to, one thing that you don't need to worry is you really don't need to bother what is the how this offset is being calculated, okay, and then how these uh, lines are split into records. This is not your job. This is not your job. Why? Because uh, this is something that is going to be done by this uh, record reader. This is something that is done by this record reader. So record reader, what you are having here is a predefined uh, class or an interface that it have its own uh, predefined methods. See here, uh, today onwards, I'm going to start using the Java language. Okay, I'll talk about the classes, I'll talk about the constructors, I'll talk about the methods, I'll talk about the interfaces, and uh, a bit of some oops concepts I'll be talking about. But please be assured that uh, I'll be doing it in a lightweight manner, lightweight manner. Okay, so if you are already into Java, Okay, I'll go to the extent so that uh, I'll make you to understand the flow of the logic that need to happen. Okay, so if you really don't know anything about uh, ABC of this Java, what I do is that uh, I'll make you to understand the code. I'll make you to understand the code. Okay, so tomorrow if you are asked to write any other such type of programs, okay, that you that implement this map reduce logic, what you'll be doing is that uh, I'll try to bring you to a particular situation where you will be able to fill in the placeholders where exactly the logic has to go. Fill in the placeholders where exactly the logic has to go. Okay, this is something that I'm going to uh, tell you, uh, making sure that what are the prerequisites in case if you know Java, what is the case? If you don't know Java, what exactly is your learning process that is expected to be? Okay, guys, is it clear to you? But again, I'm making it as an exception to these guys. Sarvaran, Sarvaran is not there, right? Divya, you are exception. You need to understand yes, the in and out of this uh, Java coding. Okay? And uh, yes, Shashank, yes. Shashank, since you are a C Sharp or uh, .NET developer, okay, you are also expected to understand Inchman. Yes, Ravi. You are also expected to understand uh, the in and out of this Java coding. The in and out yes, of this sir. Java coding. Okay. But one thing I will tell you, uh, whether you want to get into the core part of the Hadoop developer or something, that is something that you will, you will evaluate on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But you need to understand and uh, you need to mature in such a way that you should be capable of writing these things also as well. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Uh, I talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay, I really don't know what exactly is your uh, background and all, so that is what I am going to talk about. So this is what is your key value pair that you are going to get. Zero, hi, how are you? And then fifteen, how how is your family here? How is your family? So this is the record reader that is going to take this uh, file split as input. That is going to take file split as input. Okay. And uh, this is going to give you the key value pair. The key is going to be the byte offset, and then the value is going to be the entire line. And the value is going to be the entire line. And uh, each and every line is expected to be given as the record to this mapper. And uh, once this mapper is processed this particular record, the second record is expected to be processed here. Is it clear? Guys, this concept is very, very important, and I expect you an interaction between you and me. Uh, to let me know whether you are really following or whether you have problems or whether you are not able to understand. I don't mind explaining n number of times in order to make sure that you understand this concept. Please be I with have a, I have like uh, one question regarding the your byte offset and value mm -hmm. pair. Mm -hmm. 
currently you give the example for this is a simple sentence hi how are you and you count the number is like if before starting in zero then you mm -hmm. count the number of 15 included space I think so comma mm -hmm. and give the value by the if in this if I example if I save the image anything so what is the byte offset of in this case uh, so let me tell you uh, very good question see generally in Windows uh, how many types of files will be seen how many types of files will be seen in Windows Mm, there is in the text file, yeah, also image, image file, PNG file. Yeah, see here, you will be seeing the text file, the PDF file, doc, DOC file, DOCX file, okay, yeah. JPEG file, okay, BMP file, like that you will be seeing multiple files, right, uh, Kamran? Okay. Right. So by seeing the extension of the file, you will be able to understand. By seeing the extension of the file, you will be able to understand what type of file is being processed. Okay, similarly, whenever uh, this uh, MapReduce, whenever this MapReduce is expected to, is expected to read a particular file, okay, you need to tell what is the type of that file, what is the type of the file, that means that in what format the file, the data within the file is coming, in what format the data within the file is coming. So what's, what you are having here is that, uh, you have the first one as uh, uh, is not text. Uh, it is a uh, text input. Format. This is the first type of file that you have, and then you, what you are having here is that you also have something called as a key value. Key value. Key value text input format. This is the second one that you are having, and then what you are having here is that uh, you have the third one is uh, sequence uh, sequence file input format. Sequence file input format. Okay. And you are going to have the fourth one that is a sequence file as text. Sequence file as text. So these are the four different types of formats you are having here, uh, uh, camera. You got it, Kamran. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got so, it. You need to tell, you need, it is your responsibility to tell the map reducer program that what type of file you are getting, what is the format of the file that you are getting, okay, depending on, depending on the uh, context and the configuration that you are going to specify, okay, the internal logic of your map reduce is going to work uh, in order to process that data. Does it answer your question now? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit clear, but not 100%. Yeah, uh, so once we start talking about the different types of examples, you'll be able to understand. Okay, now one more thing. Uh, if you are not specifying any format, the default format is always taken as a text input format only. The default uh, format is taken as text input format. Okay, for the different types of uh, raw files that you are getting, like uh, the bitmap images or something you are getting, then in such a case, uh, you are expected to give this one as a, a sequence file input format you are expected to give. Okay. Now, suppose uh, you have the hospital bills that are existing. Hospital bills. Okay. What I want to do is that uh, I would like to uh, understand the total bill that is incurred by each and every patient. Okay. In such a case, what I need to do is that I need to go with this uh, uh, key value uh, text input format I need to give. So that's why it is the responsibility of the programmer 
to analyze the type of data that you are getting, it is the responsibility of the programmer uh, to analyze the type of uh, uh, programs you are getting, to analyze the type of uh, program files you are getting, and accordingly, you need to inform the predefined classes of Java that these are the files that I'm getting, and uh, depending on the context what you're specifying, it will configure itself to process that data before it starts giving the data to this uh, mapper. Okay, Cameron, is it clear to you? Uh, yeah, it's clear. Uh, so that means like if you go in the previous slide, yeah, now if you look at the, hi, how are you in the 15, so is the third parameter will be goes to the? It is the any first like one. type parameter? Yeah, no, no, the, which is you highlighted it. No, no, the, go in the previous slide, previous slide. Yeah, this which one? is showing the key value. No, 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 next one. Yeah, which is showing the key value. So that, this is the key and this you passing value. I'm like the data structure point of view I'm talking. From the, uh, from so the, the data third one you will be passing. This is the key. Yeah, this is the key. Yeah, this is the key. And, and this is the value. value. Yeah, the and key. third one is the going into the type. Yeah, something like that. Uh, sorry, third like, one? I didn't get you. This is the key and this is the value and this is the key that is the value. Uh, this is expected to be given as output by this record reader when your file speed is given as input to that one. Is it clear? Hello? Hello. Sir, do Hello. we specify the type of the file in the record reader? Yeah, we need to specify the type of the file in the record reader, exactly. Okay, so that means the constructor know about this. Yeah, yeah. What kind of file is coming and then exactly. key yeah. value That's will be saved in this information. Okay, now no, it's clear. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, it's you clear. need to give the context. You need to give the context to the record reader how your file has to be processed. According to that context, it is going to split that particular file into this uh, key value pairs. Okay? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. So this is the key and this is the value and then this mapper is being given here. Okay. Now, what this mapper is expected to do? The mapper is also expected to produce a key value pair. The mapper is also expected to produce a key value pair. So what is the key value pair it is expected to produce here, it specifies, see here, it specifies, hi, this is one, right? Hi one, I need to do this one. Comma one. This is the hi. How are you? Is going to be specified like this. Okay. Now, uh, similarly, what is this is the for the first line. Okay. Similarly, for the second line, what it is supposed to do here for the second line, it need to specify uh, how comma one. Mm. Is comma one is comma one R comma one two comma one. So this is the output that is expected to be specified by your mapper here. This output that is expected to be specified by this particular mapper here. Okay, so this logic is clear. The file input split is being given as the input to this record reader. Record reader is nothing but a predefined program that you are going to use, predefined class and the constructor that you are going to use. And based on this one, this is going to produce this uh, key value pairs in terms of this uh, uh, entire line as well as the byte offset it is going to give us and which is supposed to be given to the mapper. And the mapper is also expected to produce uh, uh, And the mapper is going to produce all these uh, key value pairs also as well. 
is this clear till this particular point please tell me mapper is like using the same uh, offset byte offset for the second line as well no One. it is it is based on the q key value pair here it is based on the key value pair here the value is going to be the integer and uh, high what you are having here is nothing but the text the output of this mapper is a key value and uh, this key value is a bit different uh, come run okay 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 my only uh, thought process is uh, kindly don't get into the specifics of the technicalities what exactly are the data types okay we'll try to just understand the flow we'll just try to understand the flow so that's why the the discussion what you have started is nothing but the map reduce flow chart okay but i'm just trying to give you some of the teasers for this uh, uh, teasers for this uh, map reduce programs how exactly this is going to work out okay so shashank and uh, kamran and uh, divya and uh, who else uh, murli is it clear to you now yes sir <laughs> yes sir yeah how about murli i uh, i clear ravi okay got it now so i'll take this one i have got like this right okay so this is something that is being emitted by the first mapper one mapper mapper okay this is the first mapper that is going to produce and you have this second mapper also as well mapper okay in this mapper uh, i am also going to have second type of output what is that output i am going to have anybody can tell me this is this one right uh, how is your new business going and uh, all the best for your new venture all the best for your new venture okay so here i'll come here and then uh, what i do is uh, uh, let me try to do only one thing that is the, for the sake of the example i'll tell you how okay is we were you okay i'll also specify this one as business like that you have got this data here this is what is your mapper now tell me what should we do next divya this is your mapper output one this is what is your mapper output two uh, we have, have to output? use the reducer to combine the results since our output file is going to be one how, how does it do how does it do it will not be able to do it directly right it will not be able to do rightly here 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 is how is one here uh, high is one how is one like that it need to compare and then it need to do all these things so that is reason you understood it is a it is a bit difficult to the reducer to understand this intermediate outputs in order to finally give the total word count is it not going to be a, a bit of difficult process uh, uh, divya at yeah, level I... what you are saying is okay but when it comes to the reality don't you think that it is going to be a uh, a bit of tough process directly yeah. for the reducer to yeah, process this data and then uh, produce the total count for each and every word in the word file it is going to be a bit of right e yes it will be a bit of because we have same word repeated in the file and as well as mm -hmm. second and so it has yeah. to go through the entire uh, many times to many us to times. get it out which might, uh, which might fall into a cyclic loop also as well at some point of time yes okay so now the thing here is just like uh, uh, the input split uh, cannot be given as uh, the input split cannot be given as a direct input to this mapper the input split cannot be given as direct input to this mapper where you are going to have this record uh, reader that is going to exist okay so here what you are supposed to do is that uh, we are supposed to give this uh, uh, intermediate inputs sorry we are supposed to give this uh, intermediate outputs right of these mappers intermediate outputs of this mappers uh, as inputs to what type of program anybody knows what is that type of program murli this java program 
Yeah, everything what we are discussing in Java only. <laughs> Here, you know, when you're going to play cards, when you're going to play the cards, what you do is that uh, you try to use something called as uh, shuffle and sort. Shuffle and sort. Okay, it is going to combine these inputs or uh, intermediate outputs as well. It is going to combine these intermediate outputs. Okay. And then what it is going to do is that it is going to sort them. Sort them. How it is going to sort them? It is suppose uh, high is there. High is there. Sorry. High is there. Okay. And uh, how many times high is uh, repeated here? High is repeated only one here, right? High is repeated only one. Okay. Then if we go with this particular how, how many times you are hanging here? You have one, you have one, and then there also you have one. Okay, this is done here. Okay, and then if I try to specify something like uh, R. Okay, R how are you? I, how is, okay, whatever it is. Okay, uh, high all specify, and then if I have something called as R, what I need to do here, I need to give this one as R as uh, one time it is there as well as one time it is there here, whatever it is, okay. I give this one as R here, okay. And then assuming that you have this one as U or your. U, how many times it is there here? U is repeated only once. U is repeated one comma one. Like that, what we are going to do is that uh, uh, we are going to produce these uh, intermediate key value pairs. Okay, we are going to produce this uh, intermediate key value pairs. Okay, we are going to shuffle them. Okay, at the same time, what we are going to do is that the moment once it is shuffled, we are trying to sort them as in the form of your uh, proper key value pairs also as well. That's what we are going to do here. Is it clear, Murli? Yes, sir. So, uh, this type of program, what you are talking about here is nothing but a shuffle and sort program. This is also not supposed to be done by you. Why? Because uh, this is something that is going to be, this is something that is going to be done by your uh, uh, predefined uh, shuffle and sort function or the method. This is something that is going to do here. Okay. So, Ravi, just one question. Why do we need shuffle here? Sorting, I do understand. But shuffle, it's like we don't shuffle really require. Pack of cards here. Generally, what you do, don't you shuffle, uh, uh, Divija, in case you are playing a pack, pack, pack of cards. You take a, a set of cards in one hand and then you take the set of cards in another hand and then you do that uh, shuffling, right? To make sure that uh, they combine with each other. That is what is called as shuffling. Yeah, so here, because we need randomness, no? That is in the case of uh, pack of cards, that is randomness. Okay, yeah. but here, ultimately, what is your goal? Your goal is to find out, to find out the total occurrences of each word in your original file. Where is your original file? Is it not? This is your original file, right? This is your yeah. original file. But in Hadoop, how it is being stored? In Hadoop, it is being stored as file splits. Okay, and okay. where Mapper is uh, executing? Mapper is executing on those particular local file splits itself. Okay, so yeah. when the mapper is executing on local file splits and when we are going to give the data in the uh, output in the form of the local file split, doesn't, that doesn't solve the purpose, right? As per your requirement, you are expected to give a single output file that will count the occurrences of each and every word of the entire file in that particular text, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the reason there should be a place where you need to shuffle and uh, shuffle also as well, where you want to combine. Shuffling is nothing but combining here. Combining and then sorting. Okay. The okay. okay. Got okay. I got it. And yeah. Combining is Ravi, what? Yeah. Shishan, tell me. So, is there any specific sorting technique it follows, like bubble sort or quick sort? Okay. Uh, again, this is abstraction. This is abstraction. What is that abstraction here? Just like the way. Uh, the record rate is not going to tell you how it is going to calculate this offset and uh, this one. Okay, 
this is also not going to tell you how this is going to be done. This is something that is a predefined method that we are going to do and it is only to the internals of Java and that uh, JVM how it is going to process. Okay. But there are a lot of internal algorithms. I didn't get into those details. Maybe it might be uh, what we say. You know this uh, DFS and BFS? Depth for search and breadth for search. Yes. yes. <laughs> it will come up with this particular sorting algorithms. Okay. Okay, gotcha. So now you have got this one. Okay. This. Uh, I hope everybody has understood this uh, shuffle and sort, right? And one more thing, uh, uh, Divya, shuffle and sort is not required in each and every case, right? In oh, this particular yeah. logic, the shuffle and sort is required. That's why you're using this shuffle and sort here. Okay. okay? That's why you're using shuffle and sort here. Then what I need to do here? Uh, then this is something that is going to be given as uh, uh, input to your uh, program. What is the program here? That program is nothing but your reducer. Okay, so now is it not this reducer is also going to take the data in the form of this key value pair Sony? Reducer is also going to take the data in the form of this key value pairs only, right? When the reducer is going to take the data in the form of this key value pairs, okay, so that you need to write the logic in such a way that uh, the final output is expected to be produced. So what is the final output? The final output is going to be something like uh, Hi. One. O is specified as three. Is specified as three, right? Is specified as three, and then uh, R is specified as two. And uh, what is the next one? U, right? U is specified as two also. This is how it is going to be done. So let me go ahead and then show you how this uh, output is looking like. Local file system. This is user, this is your record, this is your uh, outcome, this is your part. Is not that uh, data is coming like this? This is occurring two times, A is occurring two, demo is occurring one, Hadoop is occurring one, ease is occurring one map program reduce running shows. This is occurring only one, one thing here. And I have shown you that input file also as well. Where is that your input file? This is your input file. This is a Hadoop program. This is a Hadoop demo. This shows running a map reduce program, right? So this is the final output that I need to give. So uh, reducer is going to produce these outputs here. Reducer is going to produce these outputs here, okay? And uh, once the reducer is going to produce this output, uh, then what I need to do is that uh, I need to give this uh, output, I need to give this output, sorry, I need to give this output uh, to one more interface, just like the record the reader you are having here, we need to have something called as a record writer. We need to give this output to this record writer, okay. This record writer, uh, once again, what it is going to do is that uh, it is going to write this one to a particular file, to a particular file, okay, which is present in your uh, some output directory, which is present in your output directory. So this is how your MapReduce program is expected to work out. Clear, guys? This is your file. It is being split into two things, and then uh, when we come on to here, uh, you have all these things that are going to interplay: your job tracker, your name node, your FS image, and then your data nodes. Task tracker is responsible for the purpose of executing these mappers. For the purpose of ex now, tell me one thing, uh, Divijay and uh, Murli. Does your task tracker will execute only a single mapper? Does your task tracker execute only a single mapper? My question. 
Yeah, right. Task tracker so, doesn't execute only a single map, right? Task tracker will execute multiple maps, right? It is depending on the file blocks present yeah. in it. Why? Because multiple clients will be executing uh, multiple files. Multiple clients will be executing multiple files, and uh, their multiple input splits might be present in the data node, which has to be processed. So that's why it is going to do. So that's why Hadoop is not only a framework, but it is nothing but a distributed massive parallel processing framework massive parallel processing framework here you have this f1 you have these things as well as you have this f2 and ft that exists in this particular scenario okay kindly give me one minute Yeah, this is what is your uh, uh, distributed massive parallel processing system. So here you need to understand. Uh, you need to understand what is this key value pairs? What is this record reader? What are the different types of uh, uh, input streams are there? Input streams are there, and what is the default one if nothing is being specified, guys? What is the default one if nothing is being specified? Text input format. Text input format is the default one if nothing is specified here. Okay. Now, so key value pairs it is going to specify here. So I have told you what is the purpose of this key value pair here. It is nothing but your uh, um, byte offset and the value of the entire line that is going to produce here. And again to your question, Kamran. You need to provide the context to those constructors or those interfaces or those methods for the purpose of specifying what type of file you are getting. As long as you are not specifying, it will not be able to treat anything, and by default, it is treated as a text input format only. Okay, so this is going to be given, and then this particular mapper, how many times it is going to be executed? This specific mapper, tell me how many times it is going to be executed, Murli. This mapper, how many times it is going to be executed? One time. Two times. Uh, for each uh, split, one time. For every record, it's not the split. When we yeah, talk about the split, it is the file split. When we talk about the record, that is nothing but the line within that particular file, right? That is how it is expected yeah. to be executed. Oh. So it is going to give you this particular key value pairs. You need to understand one thing: the mapper and reducer in the case of the Java programs are expected to understand only this key value pairs only. Okay. So this mapper is producing this uh, uh, output, whereas this mapper is going to produce this output, right? And what we are calling here, we are calling this particular output as uh, intermediate outputs, right? We are calling these outputs as intermediate outputs. Now the next question to you is. Uh, now the next question to you is: uh, Output is also intermediate outputs are also the data files, right? Come on. Intermediate yeah. outputs are also the data files. Now tell me where these data files are created. Are these data files created in the local file system or in the virtual file system? The virtual file system. Anybody? Shishank or uh, Divijaya? I thought it's in virtual file system. Hey, when you start filing within the virtual file system, don't you think that for every file file that we are storing, uh, we need to store the, the, those replicas also as well, right? Those replicas. Yeah. So if, that if, that, uh, uh, what it is. If we are creating one terabyte of uh, intermediate junk data, if we put this one uh, junk data within that. Uh, uh, virtual file system. How many? How much space you need to allocate? By default, three terabytes you have to allocate. So that's why these intermediate outputs, what you're hanging here, will be created outside your uh, outside your uh, virtual file system. This is one of the best entry questions that is being asked everywhere. Okay, is it clear where where they are being created now? Come on. Uh, Ravi, just repeat that again, please. See. These uh, mappers are going to emit an 
intermediate output files which are expected to exist only within the local file system but they are not expected to be created within the virtual file system so when you go ahead and then start creating them within the virtual file system the first thing that is going to happen is uh, the first thing that is going to happen is uh, let me tell you the first thing that is going to happen is for each and every block of data that you are going to store you need to allocate triple times the replication factor okay, which I don't want to do which I'm not intended to do that is the reason I'll try to keep all these uh, by default I'll try to keep all these intermediate outputs generated by the mappers in that uh, local file system only is it clear Divya? yes Ravi thank you Ravi and, just uh, one more question when you said uh, when you said we are not using sh uh, shuffle and sort for every all uh, every file, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, are there any fixed set of uh, uh, programs which processes which run on the intermediate output? Because for file formats, we do have certain fixed set. See, one thing. Suppose uh, your ma your mapping logic is in your program logic in such a way that. Uh, I need only the file splits that is expected to be generated as outputs. Okay. And I don't okay. want to further process those intermediate outputs. In such a mm -hmm. case, uh, we really don't need those reducers, right, uh, Divija? Yes. We really don't need those uh, reducers. Okay. In such a case, what happens is that uh, that situation what you're talking about will not arise. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So shuffle and sort will not come in, in that particular point. Okay. Now okay. every intermediate output that is being generated by these mappers are going to be taken in the form of this shuffle and sort, which will combine and then sort. How it is going to sort and what process it is going to sort is something that we can see at a later point of time. But it is going to sort and the default uh, sorting order is nothing but the ascending order that it does. Okay. It again it is going to produce this uh, key value pairs. Okay these key value pairs are going to be in the form of your key and then the number of occurrences this is basically a enumerator enumerator list that is going to produce as the value okay so how many times that is being used it is going to produce like this okay now what your uh, reducer is going to do is uh, your reducer is going to take this shuffle and sort as in uh, input and then it is going to produce uh, one more key value pair which is also going to be your uh, the total occurrences of each and every word in the line of uh, file of text and uh, which is further given to the record writer record writer and record writer is expected to give this one to this uh, file output directory this is what is your flowchart process any questions please ask me uh, if you are okay then what I do is that I will take another 10 minutes of time to take you through the next set of concepts uh, um, before we go ahead and then uh, start working on the other sets. Okay. Murli, is it clear? Murli, Kamran and uh, Divija and Shashank. Yeah. Uh, Ravi, sorting is an SMU order. But default order is ascending order. Yeah, but when, when you showed the output of your file, it was in descending order, right? The first, first which uh, got executed uh, Displayed on the output is something like this is in random order, right? PRS is there. P R S is here. The more. Oh, I thought value, values are in ascending or descending order. You are saying the words are in ascending or descending order? Keys, the keys should be in ascending order. The keys, okay. what if, here the key is nothing but the text, right? Key is yeah. nothing but the text. That should be in ascending order. Okay. Once we get into this MapReduce program, I will be showing you how exactly this is going to be formulated. Okay. This is okay. the key. Based on that key only, it is expected to be there in the ascending order. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is the record writer, and then this file is expected to be an output directory in this particular case. Okay. Now the question is, uh, when the client is going to submit the job to this, uh, not not tell me, you have the client. 
who is nothing but the user who is uh, supposed to submit the job right so where the job is being submitted is it being submitted to the job tracker or the name node job tracker it is submitted to the job tracker the job tracker will contact the name node for the purpose of getting that metadata that is the routing stuff that we are talking about here now when the client is submitting the uh, when the client is submitting the job to the job tracker what are the parameters that we need to specify what parameters that we need to specify the job is the uh, java java program the yeah, java program then the file the file, file name, name. Look, file name and then uh, the output directory of the yeah the output directory where the output has to be written that information has to be specified okay that information has to be specified when you are good with that information the other things are going to be internal why because client is not expected to understand into what data nodes your file splits are located and how many mappers are uh, uh, required the number of mappers is going to be decided by the job tracker and the number of reducers is going to be decided by the client depending on the nature of the program logic okay these are things that you need to understand i kindly and strongly suggest and recommend and encourage each and every one who are present here to go through those basic java tutorials in order to understand the flow of the programs why because tomorrow onwards we are going to talk about the primitive data types as well as we are going to talk about the object uh, types okay we talk about the box data types the type casting the interfaces the constructors okay uh the we are what we are going to implement what are the predefined libraries and what are the defined libraries what are these jar files and what are these uh, uh jar files and uh, class files these are all the things that we are going to uh, talk in the next couple of sessions also as well okay i'll tell you i'll tell you the basics uh, how should we write this uh, and interpret see how many one thing i want to ask uh, these guys divija kamran murli and shishank how many of you would like to go as the core hadoop developers can you please tell me i want to go as a developer yeah you want to go as a developer kamran yeah i want to go also as well okay murli uh, yeah ravi actually i developer only hey if everybody is going and developer who will go and analyst and admin here somebody has to go on analyst right at least see if yeah. you want to go for an analyst or an admin if you want to go as a developer okay uh, the first thing is i really don't want to to become an expert in uh, the next uh, one two days or during this weekend at least uh, you need to understand for your information uh, how exactly they are getting coded and if you are able to understand the behind scenes terminology and their functionality that will be easy for me to make you through navigate through this uh, word count map reduce programs in order to make you understand okay once that is done i'll give you a separate set of exercises okay and i'll be taking one more example or two more examples for the purpose of making you to understand those uh, map reduce programs before i go on to the next set of topics the yarn and all the other things i'll take you okay but before that one if you are able to get through that would be really well and great okay guys sure ravi sure ravi so, this, so tomorrow what i'm going to do is that i'm going to give you the uh, the specifics of java what are the data types that we use and what are the data types these things will use and uh, kamran i'm going to talk about those uh, specific uh, streams that i have told you Uh, text input stream okay key value text input stream these things i'll talk about tomorrow and tomorrow and monday maybe monday and tuesday also as well okay i'll be going into uh, the internals of this uh, java specifics okay you need to be uh, you need to be well aware of this uh, eclipse tool okay where you use this tool for the purpose of writing the java programs okay and tomorrow i'll always be sending you this uh, this uh, uh linux and hadoop uh, hdfs commands that you need to practice okay and uh, by monday or tuesday i think once we are done with the entire map reduce concept uh, okay then what we do is uh, 
then what it is that I will get into the other concepts okay for you to really understand these things so yeah we have a class tomorrow um, if, if the class is not going to start at 9 p.m. CST it will be start, uh, we'll meet at 9 30 9 30 will meet okay 9 30 means 10 30 CST 10 30 EST will meet tomorrow only for tomorrow okay so tomorrow is half hour late uh, uh, tomorrow is half an hour late, but today as per like the Toronto time, like today is start at ten o'clock. We started on dot time today. Yeah. We started dot time today, and uh, tomorrow is the only one day that uh, I may be taking late. But yeah, we'll have a class, and uh, I want you to go through those uh, Java specifics of your map reduce, okay? Uh, before we get into the things, so Murli. And Kamran, I am going to add you to that uh, Hadoop group. Okay. So, any further requirements and any further news or uh, exciting concepts, the things that we need to share, that is something that is going to be shared within the group. Okay. So, I'll be I'll be adding you to that uh, group. Already, these two guys, uh, Divijay and uh, Shashank, are the part of that group. Okay. And then we'll be seeing some more exciting things that are expected to come in the near future. Okay. And, and did you create any group ID for like yeah, yeah, the instruction and you know, all thing installation? And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be creating that one. I'll be creating that one. Uh, yeah, and then you're gonna be I send have... the all material or that group ID, correct? Sure. Yeah, I'll be doing that one. And because uh, like uh, you're saying, like uh, tomorrow you're gonna be start the programming, but we are not able to set up our environment. So, for example, if you pass before weekend so we will be install these all thing i already did i already did that one Cameron. since that the big classes has not given your uh, email id i was not able to forward it to you but uh, i passed I it can to pass, and, uh, i can give you now to you my yeah yeah, yeah. I, I have got your thing i have got your thing i'll forward you those instructions also as well okay great so my email id is simple my name is at hotmail.com yeah yeah i i got your email id no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Okay, okay. Bye. 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 Bye.